In October 2005, two backcountry ice climbers make their way to the base of the Mendel Glacier, just over a thousand feet below the summit. A piece of fabric fluttering near a mound of rubble attracts their attention. As they get closer to the mound, they see something that they can't unsee. It's a corpse, partially buried in the ice and snow. They can tell it's a male body. It's lying face down, arms spread out. His head had been crushed. And when they got closer, they saw that he was even missing a leg. Over time, his face has become unrecognizable, but his head is still covered in thick blonde hair. The ice climbers wonder if this was once a hiker who met an unfortunate end. Who was this person? Then they see his knapsack and realize that it's not a knapsack, it's a parachute. On closer inspection, they see the words U.S. Army Air Corps stenciled on the fabric. U.S. Army Air Corps is an old name. It's a forerunner of the U.S. Air Force. But back then, before the attack on Pearl Harbor, it was called the U.S. Army Air Corps. When the hikers brush the snow off the body, it's confirmed. His uniform is clearly from the Second World War. World War II servicemen in California? That's strange. But we do know that top secret activities were carried out during World War II all over the American West. Was this soldier involved in a mission that has never been revealed? The climbers alert local law enforcement to their bizarre discovery. Within days, a specialized military response team is on the scene. The first order of business in an investigation like this is obviously to get the remains back to the lab. Because they didn't want to damage the body and it was encased in ice, they ended up taking a block of ice with the body back to the lab. That's where forensic anthropologists will gently thaw him out by spraying him with water. They need to go slowly to minimize any damage to tissues. The forensic anthropologists, of course, begin to look through his personal effects and they find a nameplate. But unfortunately, it's terribly corroded and unreadable. Investigators turn to the same tools employed at crime scenes. An ultraviolet light helps tease out faint details on the nameplate. Inscribed in the metal are the letters E-O-A-M. They search through the military records, but there's no names that match those letters. But the pockets of the dead man's uniform offer several clues. 11 coins, a fountain pen, and a scrap of paper. What was written down on that note that he was carrying with him? Was he bringing some kind of secret message? This time, they use a high-resolution video spectral comparator. It's actually the same technology that the FBI uses to investigate suspicious documents. The comparator is able to decipher the faded words. Could it be coded, classified information? It turned out to be a few lines from a limerick. And given the kind of songs and stories that lighten the mood for military members going off to war, you can imagine what kind of limerick it was. If he wasn't on a secret mission, why was he there? The skies over the Sierra Nevada were busy during the war years. Airmen were trained at several nearby bases. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, aviation cadets often crash, and there were lots of crashes in that vicinity. Since World War II, nearly 50 aircraft have been listed as missing in the area around Kings Canyon Park. Some of the planes in the backcountry have never been found, so how do you match this airman to his plane? The coins in the man's pockets may help narrow down the timeline. The most recent coin is from 1942, so obviously that was the earliest year he might have crashed. 
a search through the military archives for 1942 finally offers a clue. November 18th, 1942. Seven military aircraft took off from Mather Air Base outside of Sacramento on a training flight. Only six aircraft returned. These planes were Beach AT-7s, twin-engine aircraft used for navigational training. Air Force recovery records show that two years after the end of the war, in 1947, the wreck was found in the vicinity of where the airman's body was located. But something doesn't add up. Official documents already list a place of burial under a single headstone for the four-man crew that was aboard. If the four men are already buried, who is this fifth mystery man? The team then catches a break. They find the flight manifest of the airplane. One of the names on the manifest is Leo M. Mustanen, a 22-year-old cadet from Minnesota. The letters of his name are close to the letters found on the corpse's ID tags, but they'll need more evidence to get a definite match. They turn to DNA analysis. The sample is mitochondrial DNA, a molecule that's passed from mother to son, and it's this kind of information that they need in order to make the identification of this airman. But when the team tracks down the Mustanen family, they discover that there are no maternal relatives alive to provide a sample for comparison. But then the investigation team realizes that there's another way that DNA can help with this case. It's called process of elimination. Investigators trace the families of the other three airmen known to be on board the flight. Luckily, those families are able to provide DNA samples that can be compared to the DNA of the mystery airmen. None of them is a match. So the investigators can conclude that these have to be the remains of Air Cadet Leo Mustanen, who was only 22 years old when he died. The mystery of the Sierra Airmen's identity is solved. So what about that name tag? Why was there no match? Well, it turns out the investigation was thrown off by a misspelling. Leo Mustanen's middle name was Arvid. Leo A. Mustanen, not Leo M. Mustanen. The report incorrectly reported his middle initial as M. But one thing still doesn't add up. The military said that there were four bodies in that grave. So who is the fourth body if Leo Mustanen was actually buried in the ice? It turned out that the military hadn't been entirely forthcoming about the burial, and the reasons are actually quite understandable. When the crash was discovered, no bodies were found to bury. But the military thought it'd be easier on the families if they had a grave, if they had a place to visit. And so they told them that the bodies were found, but just not identifiable. And they staged a mock burial in that grave. In 2007, two years after the discovery of Leo Mustanen's body, searchers found the body of another crew member, Glenn Munn. The other two crewmen are still out there, resting in the Sierra Nevada.